my job is to try and find new opportunities, new products and new supply chains for organic producers. And thatching straw is potentially one of those. Organic growing conditions are particularly suited to producing quality thatching straw and in this video we'll try and give you a good idea of what's involved in producing for this niche and quite interesting market. Well I've always grown straw on the farm, uh, mostly wheat, uh, mostly oats and barley. But a few years ago I was asked to thrash with an old thrashing machine that I had, some long straw. And because that scheme failed and we did their thrashing, I then two years later took on the growing of the thatching straw. And since then it's expanded and we've learnt a lot of lessons. And uh, we've actually arrived at where we are today, which, which I think is now quite a successful end to what we began seven years ago. So how easy is it to move from growing modern varieties, uh, from primarily from grain, to growing thatching straw? And what are the main differences between the, the, the two different systems? We found that there, there are a few changes. Uh, if you want to grow the winter wheat, of course, you, you know, we've always been growing spring corn. So that would tie up a field for the winter. But we found that planting it about the end of February has the best results even though it is supposed to be a winter variety and if you put it in and you've got the weather conditions right then you can harvest it about the middle of August when the weather is quite good so the transition is not that dissimilar to growing oats because normally if you put oats in in April it combines about the same time so uh, fertilizing and, and that kind of management it really is uh, very similar uh, but you need, I suppose, more than uh, anything else. If you're going to grow successful tall uh, wheat, then you'd probably need to plough a field in sward and then plant it, and then the second year plant it again in wheat. But after then, your crop yields drop, obviously, and, and the weed problems start. So, yes, it can be done and without great difficulty, and certainly without a great deal of fertiliser. Seed rates, we put 100 weight, uh, I mean old figures now, 100 weight and a half of wheat to the acre. And uh, we don't uh, put a great uh, amount per acre simply because we're wanting the straw to be standing in uh, rough weather that we get. If you put less seed to the acre, you have a lot stronger straw because there's less competition, therefore, you have a well, we've been very successful actually at, at having a crop which is approximately four foot high uh, without uh, blowing over in, in the wind. So yes, it can be done. So if normally you would grow uh, in row spacings of three inches, what would you do for, for, for thatching straw? We do it at seven inch spacings. Again, that's to do with competition and uh, obviously you're gaining uh, the size of the wheat in the year as well. Uh, if you're going to use it for milling, you want a big year with plenty of flour and if there's less competition then you have the, obviously a bigger year and much more flour in the head. Why is thatching and thatching straw so important? Uh, well it's certainly a time-honoured uh, uh, endeavour because uh, years ago uh, grain was grown for food and the byproduct was uh, straw which of course could go on your roof so from the year dot everybody has always been thatching everything. Where does most thatching material come from at the moment? Uh, today most thatching material actually I believe comes from China. It's probably watery as well. Straw growing tends to be pretty much dying out. Uh, the carbon footprint of that is a bit shocking. Um, you've got to get watery from wherever you can of course. You know. So what are the opportunities uh, and let's say the market for Welsh organic growers who want to produce thatching straw? Uh, there's, there's a good market for organic straw nowadays because people are beginning to realise that uh, plants grown in high input conditions uh, ha have a shorter life in the roof because they grow like the clappers but they don't put down this high wax silica uh, covering on the straw that you want. So uh, old varieties grown in low input conditions uh, are ideal for uh, lasting a long time on a thatch roof. And what about the grain harvest from these heritage varieties that we grow predominantly for thatching straw, say? 
We believe that uh, certainly old varieties of, of wheat uh, have uh, good edible properties. The grain mills up and uh, makes good uh, biscuits, bread and cakes. And if we can uh, get those varieties uh, successfully grown, then you've got uh, like a two-edged crop, really. You've got the straw, which is now the predominant material you want, and the byproduct is food, which is unusual. Um, but then uh, the actual grain from this makes specialty bread or artisan bread, and I, I, I'm unsure of how much it would be worth, but considerably more than feed grain. And um, as a thatcher, what ideally do you want from thatching straw? What are the quality criteria that you're looking for? Uh, for thatching straw, we like uh, the straws to be fairly tapered at the top, uh, natural taper at the length of the stem. Uh, that facilitates thatching. Uh, a good length, a nice bright colour, a high wax sheeny coat, and um, and not to be dog legged. We don't want it dog legged too much, otherwise it opens up the coat. It is feasible to grow thatching straw in Wales. Now, <clears throat> to um, uh, to elaborate <laughs> somewhat on that, it would be challenging. It is challenging, in fact, to grow thatching straw. Uh, especially in Wales, probably because of the uh, the vagaries of our climate, in that uh, we do need, um, a, I suppose, a good week of good weather at the right time. Because when that straw is cut, and it'll be cut by a binder, and it'll be stacked uh, in in its sheaves, it needs about a week of dry weather on the field for it to fully ripen. And it is that aspect of the ripening of the straw that gives the thatcher the quality of material that he needs. So that is probably the greatest challenge. Of growing thatching straw in Wales. The other uh, big challenge I suppose is the the need for what is now considered to be vintage machinery and the the number of working binders is I suppose maybe it isn't diminishing maybe in fact it's increasing but how are you going to access them um, it's also very, uh, quite laborious very labour intensive and you need a uh, I suppose a willing and somewhat partly trained workforce that know how to um, gather sheaves and to stack them. Thatching straw is a viable enterprise as long as there is a reasonable price on the on the finished product. Obviously there are, there's a lot of intensive labour involved in uh, reed combing but the average price per tonne of reed combed quality wheat is between seven and nine hundred pound a tonne. Now obviously that's way above what you could get if it was feed straw value. Um, we've never sold the the grain uh, that's always been returned to the person that we had the seed off up until this point. But uh, we think that if we uh, from here on grow our own varieties and prepare our own mixture for, for bread making, then we can expect two pound a kilo of processed flour uh, and even higher. Uh, as we've been told, there is a good market for it. There's also a market uh, for the wheat only, and uh, that can be between two and three hundred pound a ton. What have we learned? We've learned that indeed organic growing conditions are suitable for producing quality thatching straw. We've learned that there's strong demand from it from thatchers, and they're willing to pay premium prices for it. Agronomically, there are some key differences in growing for thatching straw as compared to, to feed wheat. Crucially, the big differences are in the labour requirement and the processing. If you are interested in looking at thatching straw in a bit more detail, there are two organisations you need to contact. One is the National Association of Thatching Straw Growers and the other is the Conservation for Traditional Thatching Group. Both of those websites are on the screen now. Click on those, on those links and you'll find all the people that you need to help you take your business forward.